So yeah, today I'm going to talk about glamour. Just for one thing, uh, who knows anything about glamour? Oh, cool. Um, who voted for it? Oh, no. um, so the fr I wanted to say two things before we start. The first thing is that I am not the only author. I'm just one of the authors. The main author is actually not here. It's named Philip Bunge. And this was um, his master project. And the nice thing is that we just figured out what the topic, the exact topic, so uh, will be in the part, in the last three months of the project. So this is basically the result of three months plus effort. And um, Lucas Rangley was um, also in the, in the first team, and then later on we were joined by David Rutlisbergen and Jorge Teresia. And the second thing I want to say is I want to thank Isak for making it possible for me to be here. So um, they kindly um, invited me here and it's always a pleasure for me to be in this crowd. And the reason is that you have this really nice sensitivity to you know, objects. So who here loves objects? <laughs> yes, that's, that's the spirit. And you have this sensitivity to objects and dynamic and dynamic systems. And that's 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 not a given. You, know, you go and feel to present it in other places, it's it's just not happening that people, you know, embrace objects and live in some sort of a dynamic system. Now the only thing with objects is well, you know, you have other systems like Java for example is an object oriented system. Um, and um, um, the problem with objects is that they can get complex over time. They are slightly more difficult to grasp. So in the beginning they might be okay, especially if you just talk about classes. But when you talk about objects, we can have millions of them. And they are intricate in all sorts of different ways. And so, the best friend of a, of a small book developer is this. Anybody know who this is? Right, so we live there. We live there a lot of the time. We spend there a large part of our time. Why? Because we can go there and we talk with our object. Right. This is why we talk with objects. And this is what I want to talk to you about. So how do we talk with objects? How do we get to know objects? And to put the emphasis on the dynamic aspect of this process. And so this is why um, what Steph actually proposed is uh, the title is that Script your browser in 15 minutes with Glamour. So now it's unclear whether the browser would be glamorous or the scripting, but um, nevertheless, this is the title. And so, now given that it's about showing you that you can do things in 15 minutes, um, I spend a lot of time demoing. So I'll try to build browsers in 15 minutes. And now, Anybody here knows what is a browser? So we'll be doing a bit of this um, because I always think that geeks, they, they need a bit more exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. So, we'll be doing, so a browser, what is a browser? Typically when we think about browsers, we think about, uh, well, this is a browser, right? It's something we have a structure and we want to navigate through it. We want to go from one place to another. We want to present data in various different ways. And when, when it comes to understanding an unknown structure, an unknown model, then you have two possibilities. This is a nice way. Right? This is a, is a generic browser. You can navigate any small talk object with it. Now, it might not be the most effective of, of the navigation process. You know, you might not do the best of it because you have to click through all the implementation details to get to where you want to get. Not to mention that you will spawn a hundred windows in the process. And, well, on the other hand, the other option is that once you know what your model is and once you know what your navigation path is, is you build a dedicated browser. So a code browser, for example, is a dedicated browser. Right? And then, in this case, here we have, it's much better. We don't deal with all the details um, of the objects, and then we can move from one place to another, and then we support the use case 
that we want to focus on. So in the case of just uh, coding, we don't care about the structure of the class. All we want to know is how do we get from the class to the methods and then edit the code. Right? So this is what the browser is doing. Now, the, the thing is this. So the, the generic one, the generic browser, can do anything. Right? It can accommodate any object, but the navigation flow is not quite uh, nicely supported because you have to go through all these intermediate steps. On the other hand, you have the dedicated browser, like this one, which supports exactly the use case at hand, but the problem is it's slightly difficult to build. So what we would want, we would want to have this all the time for all our models, but it's a bit difficult to build at the moment. So you, then you resort to, you know, either you go and code it directly in your user interface, using interface frameworks like Morphic or Seaside or so, but then you will have to, what typically happens is that the rendering code is intertwined with the navigation flow. So the, the logic of the browser is a specific logic, it's not any user interface, it's a browser. A browser has to support me to go from one place to another, inspect places and present them in various different ways. And so, now, the reason, the, like, one evidence for how um, slightly too difficult it is to build browsers is that there are so few of them, actually, in the code. Well, of course, we will always argue, for example, especially in the Squeak or Faro world, that there are slightly too many code browsers. But, um, in general, that's basically it. So, for example, in Squeak or Faro, we still don't have a browser for a message type. Right? You do message tell is fine on this will be doing a profiler on your code, and what you get is a print printout. That's all. Why don't we have a browser there? Because it's slightly too difficult to do. Even if you have something like an only browser infrastructure, which is a great one, right? It's a nice path. But it's a bit too bulky to program. And so <coughs> What I will do now is that, well, given that yesterday we were um, introduced to MetaCello, anybody heard of it? Cool. Um, so, I would like to build a browser for MetaCello. <laughs> and so, not a complicated one, a simple one, not too difficult. So, I just sketched it a bit here. So, what I would like, I would like to get versions here for a given project, so different types, different configurations. And then when I click on a version, I will get the list of packages in that version and the comment for that, uh, for, that, for that particular version. That's what I would like to do. And I would now, given I don't really know the meta model of MetaCello, so I, don't, you know, so I will ask Dave to help me or sustain me a bit from the, from the side. So what I have here is um, I just have a workspace and I initialized a browser. So, we, what we will do is that we will take MetaCello, MetaCello browser, <coughs> no, project, project, and here, I, if I say versions, I get all the versions of the uh, description of the MetaCello project itself. So, I will want to browse that. <coughs> so, now I will say, okay, browse. Browser, open on, and if I execute that, what I get is a list of things, right? All the versions that I'm passing there. So what happened now, I just open a browser, I pass it as an input, a list of things, and it just figured out, oh, well, okay, it should be a list in there. But, well, that's not particularly useful. So let's construct the first, um, the layout that we wanted. So we wanted the, the column on the left-hand side with, um, with the packages, with the versions, and then on the right hand side we have two rows, of not the column, and in the, in the column we have two rows with the packages and the comment. So, browser, so I have a column, and the first one we call it versions, and I have another column, and in this column I will have, I will build two rows, so column row packages and row comment. 
Let's see how this looks now. Ah, it will figure it out and you should put it on the left hand side in this moment. It's just because it came first in the specification. And now here, when I click on one of these, it should appear, something should appear here and here. Okay, now first, let's specifically tell it to, to show the input on the versions uh, pane. So I will say, please show the input there and use, to do that, use to display um, browser list. Okay, so this will be the equivalent, we get the equivalent result. Okay, now we want to link the versions to the packages in this moment. So we want to say, okay, browser show on packages. Now every time, and link it with the versions pane, so every time there is a selection in the versions, I want the input to be sent to the packages pane. And then, to do that, to display things, please use a list. Now, what do we get as an input? What we get as an input is a version specification, right? So, now we need to transform this. So, I don't want to display a version specification, but I want to display the packages in this version <coughs> specification. So, so, I do here a version, and then... Oh, that's a spec. Yeah, versions. Oh, no, it's a version. Oh, version. Yeah. And then? And then version spec. Version spec. Um, package specs in load order. Package specs in load order. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. So now, when I click here on the left-hand side, something should happen on the right-hand side. And indeed, I have the objects that I wanted. I don't like the way they look, though. Um, I would like just to get the name here and not a uh, metachel package spec. So. so, I don't just display it, but I also want to format each of these items. So, I will get a package um, in the format. And so, how do I format that? I don't know what you just use name. Package name. Uh, name or file? File? Mm -hmm. Name is better. Okay. So now we have, now we can navigate there and see that in version 10 something more happened and then later on some more tests were added. So we can just navigate, we have a small navigator for our configuration. Okay, now we also wanted to have the, the comment. Um, so we want to show on the comment from versions. And in this case, we're not going to use a list, but we're going to use a text to display that comment. So I'll still get a version as an input. How do I get to the comment from a version? How do I get to the comment? I just say version description. Okay, so there it is. We have our browser. So every time I'm selecting something on the left hand side, I can see the list of packages over there and the comments on the bottom side. Now, it's true that we said that we built the browser in 15 minutes, um, so we still have about 10 left. Um, so, why not build a class browser? So, first, first let's, let's summarize what we have here. So what we have here, I didn't tell you about the internal implementations of the, uh, what the model is. We'll get to it, into it uh, a bit later. But right now, um, what happened here is this. So Dave here knew the structure of his model. I didn't. I only knew, I only knew what the language is to be used. And so basically he could have known this, but we paired up. And he told me, how do I navigate this model? On the fly, and then we prototyped it, and we iteratively built our browsers until we got to a satisfying uh, solution. Right? So this is the use case that we, want to, that we want to support. The use case here is this. If you can just 
um, instead of going through the inspector or printing out to figure out what the structure of your model is, if you could just take like a couple of minutes, maybe in the lunch break or so, and build your browser, and so that you can support any navigation that you want, you will just start doing this as a met you will start using this as a meta tool for any data structure that you want. And even if this will last only for half a day, because maybe I don't need it tomorrow, it's still worth the investment because it's so easy to do. It's a small language, right? So we, on top of our model, we have this small API that looks like a DSL. And once you learn this, you have basic blocks to build such browsers. Okay, now questions? Now actually, I would like that, um, I would like you to just raise your hand and, or ask the question directly during the presentation <coughs> rather than wait until the end. So I guess we can have some sort of a dialogue. Okay? Okay, so now one thing I will still want to do with this one is, so if I execute it like this, so I say browser open on, well, what happens here is that it's, um, it displays it in, in Morphe. But I can also just say, okay, I don't want the browser, the whole browser to be open on in, in Morphe, but instead I would want to, um, to register it to another, um, another application. Maybe you heard of it, there's, um, there's an infrastructure called, what was it? Well, there's a tutorial afterwards, so you can figure it out. Um, register model? Yeah, I think that's the bit. Yes, something like that. What's, what's this? Register? Um. Okay, so now I, what I've done, I, I just took this browser and I registered it to. Um, I registered it to a specific, um, to a, to a C-site component, a generic one, and I have a browser. Okay, so again, the other idea is that you basically have to care not that much about rendering. Of course there are trade-offs there, like at the moment we just have some basic components that we use. Nevertheless, they can support quite a nice use case. Right? So, okay, so this was, um, that's the idea, right? So we said scripting your browser in 15 minutes with all the talking and all the explanations. We're still five minutes short. We still have five minutes left to do things. So as I said, let's take a look at the cloud browser. So what I will do from now on, I will just take one use case after another and try to implement that. If that's okay with you. Maybe like this we can have, yes? Yes. Can you always make sure the browser and the code that opens it are both visible? That's useful. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, because the code is just going to be just available. There's no real problem. Is it during the talk, it's quite useful to see the browser you just popped open and the code you just did it Well, okay, I'll give it a try. So, let's take a look at a simple, uh, yes? Can I edit things? Yes, I can edit things. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's take a look at this um, at this uh, this browser, right? So on top we have, let's say, for example, categories and classes and method protocols and uh, methods. And there we have, if I select the method, and I have the source code, or I see the class comment, and so on. Okay, so what I will do for this, um, I will open um, um, I will open um, a, a class. So, and in this class, I have one method. So it's called the ST code, not ST navigator. It's already pre-made. So if I execute this method and I input um, all the categories in Smalltalk, then what I get is a okay. Um, 
what I get is um, just the upper part of the browser. Right? So I see the list in the, in the class categories, of class categories, and then I have four slots for the other things. Okay, so let's try to do this. Uh, let's, let's implement this. Just similar like we've done before. So a browser, column, yeah, no, browser show on class categories and use a list. Browser list. And then on the classes, we want to link it with um, class categories. And we still want to use a list. Only here. So we, what we get here is a class category. That's a symbol. So that's a bit of a pain. And now here's the problem. Usually, all these mapping tools, they if you can if you have a nice model, then it's easier to map them to the user interface. But when the model is not quite right. When you have to navigate and get things from here and there, it becomes slightly more difficult to, to use the mapping tools. Pretend it's right. Sorry? Pretend it's right, right class category, and then you implement that with the ugly search. Sure, but you just it's not in the prototyping um, area of things, right? It's more in the let's do it in two steps. So this is why here we have a block, and then it, basically this block, what it does, it just takes something as an input, and just should, in this case, given that I have, I want to display a list, it should just return a list of things. So now, anybody here knows by heart how do you get from to the list of classes from a category symbol in Squeak or Faro? Nobody. Yes. Okay. So I have no idea, and I. Spend a bit of time, and this is the console instance is select. <laughs> okay, or this one. Okay, this is the magic script. So now let's execute this again. Okay, I'm here, and I can navigate, and I see. Oh, that's interesting. I have it all there. And then, um, what 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 should I do next? Well, next I want to display the um, on the categories. So show on categories and from classes and you should use still a list. You should still use a list, so browser list. And in this browser list, um, now we want to display the categories. Now we have a class. Anybody knows how to get to the categories? Organization. Organization. That's it? Yeah. Categories. Cool. Thanks. So we execute the code again. Let's see what has, what does, what it does. So, oh, okay. It's here. Fine. Now, how do we get to the methods? Well, that's a bit slightly more complicated. So nicely, the best way to do would be to get um, so to, to get here, to get from the category to the methods, right? The category should be, would be cool if the category would know the methods. But it turns out that categories are against some symbols. So we're in a bit of a situation here. Nevertheless, the cool thing is that um, when we select a class, we want to see the list of all, of all methods, right? So maybe we can get out with that. So let's see. Browser show on methods from classes using still a list. But in this case, so what I would like here is I would like to say class selectors, I guess, no? Okay. So we execute this, we select the class, oh, and then we have it here. But now we would like that if we select the category here, to get the subset of things. So now, this is, we're in a bit of a situation here, given that, uh, for this particular presentation, we are only reasoning about, you know, in terms
terms of the class. If this is the only thing that we get as an input here in the methods uh, in, the, in this block. So the best thing would be if we would also get the category here in this block. That would be really cool because then we can we could do what we wanted to do. So let me go here, close this. And to do this, we can specify several origins. So in this case, right now, in this block, I will get two objects, the class and the category. Okay, now, so when the category is not nil, okay, so, so when the category is nil, then I want to display the list of all things. And when it is not nil, when it is not nil, then I would like to get only the, uh, the method in this category from the class. Um, can anybody help me with that? How do I get that? So I do class organization list and category name uh, like that. That's all. Okay. So let's try. So I select the category. I select the class. I see all the list. I select this, and I see only the subset. So. What we've introduced here is that we can reason about several places in our model, in our, in our browser. Right? We have several points of views that we define, and we can, we can specify the transformation, how should, we, how should a thing be displayed based on several places at once. Okay. Uh, is this selectable? Sorry? Is this multi selectable? Can you select several? Yes, you can. <laughs> yes. Um, if if you specify that the list is multi selectable, then what you get at the end as a result, you won't get an individual item, but you will get a collection of things. And so then you will have to treat the collection of things. But I will show you a couple of extra examples afterwards. Okay. Um, so now we have the upper part of our browser. What we would want is the lower part of the browser. So. Now, maybe this, uh, maybe this navigation that we just defined is reusable. I mean, having the structure of classes, what we want, in, maybe we want to be able to reuse this part of the browser in the context of a larger browser. So let's put this, so now we define the upper part, and let's put this in the context of a larger browser. So I have here another method called stcodeBrowser, and this browser has only um, has only two things. So it has a navigation, uh, a row on top, and, a, and a, um, let's call it details at the bottom. Okay, so what we want to say here is that, okay, please show on the navigation, which is the thing on top, navigation, and now to use this, don't use something that is standard in the widget list, but instead, use a custom um, presentation that is given by the, the previous browser that we just implemented. Oh, SD Navigator. Okay. So if I execute this, what I get is at the top, I embedded the browser, the previous browser, in a larger browser. Now all I want is I would like to be able to, so every time some, I select see here on top, I would like to get the results at the bottom. And so that I can treat it afterwards, for example, to show that the method source code or um, the class comment and so on. Now, to do this, so let's go back a bit. So this, this here, whenever I say something like show on um, a pane from another pane, what I'm basically saying is that please show from the selection of the class categories, show in the, as an input in classes um, the, 
those objects. Link these these two ports, these two yeah we call them ports, and so so that you can move objects from one to another. So in fact, this would be equivalent to saying we have a small syntax for that. So the entity port and selection. So if we say that, it's basically equivalent. We have we get the same result. So if I'm here, I get the same thing. Okay. So what this means is that I can pass any named object from one part to another, from one pane to another. So what I want now is I want this browser, this navigator browser that is on top, I want to publish and uh, send to outside the selected class uh, and the selected method, or maybe also the category. So what I want to do here is so I say browser send to outside uh, selected category from class categories and send to outside selected class. So I'm just giving them names from classes and selected method from methods. Okay, so right now, what this means is that those objects um, will be accessible from the outside environment. Are there questions? <coughs> yes, you cannot do that. And there is a reason for that, we'll get a bit later into that. So one reason is so that you can have things explicitly, so that you can have a bit of control, because when your browser becomes larger, right. So, uh, what we can do now is that we want to show on the details from the navigation. Now, we want to get the selected, uh, selected class and we also want to get the selected method. And we want to use the following things. So, first of all, I want, we want to use a test to show um, so to display the, um, given the class, to display the class, um, how do you say the definition, just the definition? The, the class definition. So this is when, well, it will certainly be, um, so this is when the class is not nil. <laughs> Thank you. Indeed. Thank you. Right, because this is the pane, this is the name of the pane, this is the name of the object that I will just want to get. You can, you, only if you need that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Lex Monta. Yes, it is Lex Monta, yes. So, now I selected the class and I set the definition there. Okay. Then, now of course, what, we, what happens here, let's execute this again. We select this and I select the method, nothing happens, right? Because I'm not reasoning about that part yet. So, let's do this thing here. So I also want to show a text that display, so given the class and given the method, right? Because the method is going to be the second argument that I'll get in my block. Um, how do I get the source code? Is class organization source code app? Just source code app, okay. Like that? Okay, and this is this will only happen when the class and the method, when the method no is not new. Oops, forgot a semicolon here. Okay, so now I'm selecting something. I'm selecting the class, and I see here. Um, oops. Oh, method. Both, 
Oh. So right. So what we have here exactly? So when I select when I select the class, I see the class definition. Now I select the the method as well. I still see the class definition because that tab is still active. Right. So now two things are active in the same time. And just choose is to show me tabs. And the second one is the source code. Now, of course, it's not nice that they are called float, and so it is because this is by definition the, the name of the object that is get as an input. So we can give it a title, uh, class definition, and we give it another title here, source method, source code. And the other thing is that I don't particularly like the order, so I would like that when I select the method, I want um, um, I want the method to appear first. So now I'm here. I select this. I see the, the class definition. And when I select the method, I see source code and class definition. now is the following thing. So, actually several things happen. First of all, um, we reused um, a browser. But there was an existing browser with a specific navigation type, uh, navigation flow, and then, just a second, and then we reuse it in the context of another browser to show more things. This is the first one, and in the second one we accommodated any, right, all sorts of meta models. I didn't necessarily know, but if you know the meta model, right? If you know how to get from one object to another, then you can display that. And the third one is that you can control this displaying in all sorts of different ways. Right? You can control multiple points of views uh, in the same time and control them in the order that you want. Yes. Uh, you define the two conditions for show No, we show two tabs. Just, so the question is, what if the well, two conditions match in the same time? And so basically we have two presentations that are accessible in the same time. And the answer is, you just show two tabs. But that's the job of the display. How do you, how do you choose to do it? Sorry? It doesn't matter what kind of, it's just, sure, I'll get into that a bit later, right? If you have more, the choice of the render is just show your tabs. Okay, other questions? Yes? Can they update if the source code changes in the browser? No, and this is one, this is the current drawback. Um, but it's not impossible to solve. So the question was, uh, what happens if the model, the underlying model changes, the objects change, does this reflect in the browser? And currently it does not. But nothing prevents us to add it later. And this is one of the first <coughs> things to do next. Other questions? Can you render uh, render trees which are collapsible? Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Sure. The question was, uh, can the renderer render trees? Right. So can we have other things than this boring and text? Sorry. What widgets? What widgets do we have? That's a more generic question. That's true. But before we do that. Um, actually, let's show the tree first. So I'm going to this navigator, and I will show the tree of um, to show the tree of the um, of classes. So instead of just showing the tree, a list, we show a tree. So here we say tree. Uh, yes, a tree, and if I have these are all the classes. Yeah, let's not do it now. And we'll do it, we'll come back to this later. Okay, so yes, the, the list of widgets. But before we go into this, let's see what we have here as the anatomy. What's the, what's the model behind? So that we can understand the later questions a bit better. Okay? So, let's take a brief look at this. So what we have is a browser. That's the main thing. A browser has, um, so that's the thing with green. And this 
these are the panes, right? This is now we're looking at the bottom, at the top part. So at the top part we have the panes, the, the those in black. And what we've done afterwards, we linked these uh, panes, and we use a component and connectors kind of model. So we call these ports, and the connections we call them transmissions because basically what we're doing we're just transmitting from one place to another um, information. And then afterwards. We can have transmissions that have several sources, right? like we saw in the case of the methods. And we can have, we can specify the presentation inside each pane, so how the pane is presented. Now, if, when we want to embed a browser in another browser, what we've done is we put a pane around it. We call this the navigation. This is what happened in the SD uh, code navigator. And then, <coughs> Um, we had the lower part, um, uh, the, the whole, the whole brown, the details pane, and then we linked those things. Right? So we defined first named ports for the upper pane. In this case, was selected class and selected methods. We explicitly said what goes in those ports, and then we link them later on and reason about them later, uh, further. Okay, questions? Okay, so this is the schematic part. Now, what's the model? here. So we have a browser, we have panes. A browser can have as, as many panes as it wants. And then a pane has ports. And again, you can have as many ports as you want. And you can name them. They, they just have to have unique names. Then these ports are linked with transmissions. And the transmissions are managed by the browser. So every time something happens in the port, the browser knows about it and triggers the, um, the corresponding transmissions. Okay, then Every pane is presented in a way. And so, uh, the other thing is that you can, this presentation takes any, the objects that are, so it's based on the objects that are handled by the pane through the ports, and that can be any object, and we're using transformations there to show how they should do. For example, this is what you saw in the display, um, in the display uh, method. Then, we can have several types of um, presentations, so three lists, text, and you can have any components that you want in there. At the moment, there are just a um, handful of them. And then, um, one thing we didn't show is that we can have several types of browsers. So, the one browser that we uh, built now and before was a so-called explicit one. Like, and we said the layout should be in a table of um, using, a part, uh, should be displayed according to a table, and then we define where the rows and the columns are, and we can define com more complex um, um, layout. But sometimes you just want to have a more implicit browser, like a finder. A finder does not necessarily have, uh, you don't control the panes. So a finder on Mac, anybody here has a Mac? Right. Okay. So. I'm talking about the finder on the Mac. Um, so the idea there is that you just click on one thing and then you see it on the next pane. And so you don't control necessarily uh, the panes. All you do is control what goes into one pane. And so you can have several types of browsers, as I want to say. And then, to be able to embed a browser in a pane, what we've done is we made the browser be a presentation. So this is how we can say, oh, a pane is presented with a presentation, a regular one, or with a browser. And this is how we managed to insert, um, this is what we said, browser custom um, self SDK navigator. Okay, questions? Okay. So then we can have several types of transmissions, but I'm not going to go into that. And the other thing, there was another question here, is that can we edit it? Can we have actions? And we can. So we can, for example, say we can put uh, an action on any presentation. And we, again, it's just a simple uh, matter of one uh, line of code. Okay, now let's come back and to the question of the widgets. So how many widgets are there and what can we do when we actually want to? Sorry? Can we have menus? Menus. 
Right. So here, do you see anything here about um, you know details of how things are displayed? Not necessarily. I mean, this is a bit like that, the tree and all this, but we don't really say there how they should be rendered. So the menus are just a way in which action, the actions associated with a presentation will be displayed. So you can map an action on the key binding, or you can map an action on a menu <coughs> when you render it. So yes, you can have a menu. And this, this action there will be interpreted by the renderer to, to, do this, to, to display the menu. But I'll show that too. OK, other questions? OK, so come, we come back to the question of how many, um, um, what do we do when we want to have more elaborate types of presentations? So, um, what, I, what I will do here is, so one thing we said, can we have a tree? And yes, we can have a tree. Um, but one other thing I will do is, um, I would just want to show a class diagram, or at least a hierarchy, like a visualization in there. So, I just have a question. Anybody here knows Mondrian? What about it? Okay. So, Mondrian is a scripting uh, engine, so it's again going in the same spirit of Glamour, but it is made for scripting visualizations. So, now we are here, we are in the code navigator, so this is the context, and when I select here a, um, when I select the class category, I would like to see also the class hierarchy of that class category, if there is one. So, I'm not going to only show a list, but I will also show a Mondrian visualization. And all it needs, all Mondrian needs is, uh, so it gets you like some sort of a renderer. And given the class category, what we will do is that, okay, so first of all we get the magic invocation to get to the classes. To define this variable. Okay, and there we say, okay, view nodes. So this is now we, we're getting into the realm of Mondrian. So that's the job of Mondrian to allow us to specify how to get to um, how to display um, a hierarchy given classes and given the superclass relationship and arrange it in a tree layout. Okay, so I accepted that, and if I run that, I get two tabs. And so if I click here on the class, I get the menu, I get the method there, but if I click on this class, I also get the method. So, basically what we're doing now is putting piece by piece, so it's just this whole scripting um, it's a scripting environment in which you build your browsers, and if you need to, um, if you need to go and control your the presentation, right? So what gets in there? So you have basic widgets, and then for more complicated um, presentations, you rely on smarter um, on smarter underlying engines. So Mondrian, for example, is one of them. Magritte, anybody who knows Magritte, right? Magritte is another one. And Magritte would be useful for displaying um, for displaying um, um, forms and things. Okay, so now if you want to take a look at the, at the, of the complete browser, we execute this, we select, we select a class, we select this, and then we have the things below. Okay. And so, now, let me come to show you a couple of more examples. Other questions? So, I would like to show a couple of more examples. So, I have here, for example, uh, the dreaded message tally. Um, so, this is an alternative to the print-on of the message tally. So, let's, let's do the tree first. So, again, this is the script. And I'm executing it given a, a certain um, profile. So I'm just executing 10,000 times 1.23 print string. 
And what I have here is the tree, um, the tree of message of messages. And in parentheses here, I put the number of milliseconds I spent in there. And if I select one of them, I see the the code highlighted. So, okay. Now, this is again, this is another explicit browser, right? So it's a table. I have something on top on the type of presentation. And then I have something below, I select something there, and I display it at the bottom. But the same, the same data structure can also be presented in another way. In this case, it's using the finder. So here we have the number, I select this, and I get it on the next pane. I select that, I get it on the next pane. So it's very similar to what only browser is doing, only slightly simpler to implement. So again, this is the code to do that. Um, now, what else can we do with this? So, now that we introduced this idea of Finder, and if you take a look at the way the Finder is, is done, here I'm not saying show here, um, um, when I'm talking about the Finder, I'm only displaying, I'm only saying what should be displayed. So, because you, you don't control what gets populated from one pane to another, all, the only thing you can control is what do you do with the object that you get in a pane? So the whole um, process of dealing with this is simpler. So here is another example of um, dealing with this, um, of dealing with um, with the finder, and I re-implemented a small inspector. So here I'm executing this on the small talk um, object. So what I have here, now small talk being a collection, I can also see it as a collection, okay? And every time I click on one of these things, what I will get is a class on the right hand side. So let's take something that is more interesting, like JS object. And the JS object is a class and has um, subclasses here. And these are all the subclasses of JS object. Okay, that's interesting. So now I can just go on like this. But what happens with the, with the code, right? So now I would like actually to see from the JS object class, I would like to get all subclasses. Now what typically happens, right, so you get a, a small text editor over here. What typically happens in these cases is you would write, okay, self with all subclasses, and then press Apple I and get another window. But it would be so cool if you would not spawn another window. So, for example, we don't put so much burden on the autumn leaves uh, algorithm of David. And so, it would be cool to press Apple O, for example, and get it on the next pane. <coughs> right? So, what I've done here, let's see how, I, how I've done that. So, the way I've done it is, I have here a text editor. I say it should be uh, highlighted for small talk. Um, so, you don't need to care about how shout works internally. That's already something. And then what happens is I'm telling it to please update the selection port of this pane when I press Apple O or uh, modifier O or when I open the menu um, O, uh, open, and please uh, update it with the evaluation of the script given the input object. So you, somebody asked about the, um, somebody asked about the, um, if there is any, what do we do if there, if we can have um, uh, menus? So here I press Apple O, but I can also just right click and say open. Okay, and this will open there. So what happens here is that because I had a title, it rendered it as a menu. And because I passed it also a key, it also binded it and uh, uh, I have a key binding as well there. Okay, questions? Okay, so this is basically it. Um, this is what Glamour is. Um, it's a small, um, it's a rather small implementation. Um, it has really simple principles. And so if you take a look at the, this is the, this is the basic model. The basic model has no uh, direct link with the renderer. The renderer is completely separated. And so this is how we can take the same object and display it in Morphic. We can display it now in Seaside, thanks to 
implementation of Lucas. Uh, he's using jQuery for that. And actually the same code, the, the core code, this code, that deals with all the logic of what the browser is and capturing the browser is ANSI Smalltalk. And it should work, actually originally it was developed in VisualWorks, only that um, it was a bit too difficult to deal with wrapper or at least um, our knowledge was too limited there and capabilities to understand that. And so um, we had a prototype implementation in VisualWorks for Widgetry because that was easier to script for us. And we also had, uh, in the, on the VisualWorks, we still have it, uh, on the VisualWorks side there is a binding also to Flex via the Flare, um, well, Glare um, implement infrastructure that we have. So the same code should work is, is not even particular to a certain small talk. And then we took it one to one and continued development in Faro later on. Now, if you're wondering, so you can have here several, um, the way you deal with extending for other presentations is um, by subclassing a presentation here and you put your own type of presentation that would deal with whatever type of rendering you want. So I had, we had Mondrian, in the same way we have Magritte, so if you have a, um, if you have an object that has a Magritte, if you have a Magritte description for an object that you get as an input, then you can render it as a form. So let me quickly show you that. So here I have an example of peer. And this is a small, um, now peer doesn't run in 2.9 yet. Um, but this one here is just the model of peer. And so if I select, these are all the, all the pages of peer, so I have a tree. And if I select them, I have the, the form over here. I can even um, save them. Or I, can, I, I have an overview here showing the size of the pages below. And I can still click there. So the visualizations are also fully interactive in Seaside. Yes, applause would be OK. Yeah. So one more thing, um, it's, the implementation is quite small, so it's 50 classes when I counted um, last night, and this is based on the Faro implementation, and, um, but here I also counted the 20 classes that are for, um, dedicated to the morphic binding. 